Okay, hello, 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 and welcome. So, I've been playing a lot of faster than light, and I've been seeing a lot of people posting various gameplay videos, but uh, I thought I would do something a bit different and make a guide instead. Um, you know, my thoughts on how I think this game should be played with uh, the various ships, and uh, today we'll be doing the Kestrel. Uh, the, the beginner ship um, and as it is the beginner ship I'll probably also be talking a bit about uh, the various uh, aspects um, in the other aspects in the game um, and not just the actual ship but I'm thinking of uh, making a series about uh, each of the ship with each of uh, the layouts and uh, in the other epi episodes I'll probably uh, just talk more about the ships uh, but since this is the beginner ship I th thought I should uh, cover it a bit more in depth uh, about um, yeah the, the, the game in general and what strategies you can use and what impacts various uh, decisions have on the actual game but uh, let's um, Let's start up uh, faster than light here, and uh, let's get to it. <sighs> yeah, and once we're done loading, we will we'll get started. Okay, so here we have the Kestrel. Um, as you can see, I've unlocked a few other ships and uh, I'll be doing some guides on them as well. Uh, and hopefully the rest of the ships as I unlock them. Um, now, I'll be sharing some thoughts about, you know, the, the general uh, way to play this game and I'm pretty sure I can give you a pretty good idea about how to at least at least complete easy mode and give you a very good chance of completing normal mode as well with the, the various ships uh, I know I, uh, uh, I, <laughs> I've been I've been able to, to, to beat them fairly easily uh, at least on easy mode on normal it obviously gets a bit harder but uh, far from impossible but you're ma uh, you're more dependent on getting a bit lucky with uh, getting the right equipment and so on um, and since the, the layout of the map and the planets and what loot you are gonna get and what the different store has and what crew members you are gonna get um, it's all randomized from game to game so luck has a bit to do with it but um, if you adapt to to the randomness of the game uh, from uh, from game to game um, and at least easy should be fairly fairly straightforward uh, once you get a, a good understanding of the game and and another, and um, you have to play to to the strengths of your ship now if we look at the the kestrel here the beginner ship so everybody will have to fly this at <laughs> Uh, in the first game uh, now I've unlocked a second layout it's got the same modules but still it uh, presents uh, some different challenges also let's just stick to the type A the newbie ship um, if you look at it first of all what's uh, a few important things is well what weapons do we have available um, do we have any special crew members um, how do we want to arrange those crew members um, and for instance how are we going to use our airlocks if we get invaded if there's fires and so on we're all gonna get into that um, once we start playing but uh, first of all what we can see on this screen is well we don't have any special crew members we all uh, we only have humans 
and uh, humans have no exceptional traits. So, unlike uh, the various aliens you can pick up, which all have uh, some sort of special abilities, uh, various pros and cons, um, humans are just, yeah, they're just a baseline, really. Um, and now about, and well, I showed you the Type B layout, another layout of the same ship, but with some different weapons, some different, uh, we've got a couple of alien crew members here. You unlock that by completing, completing these uh, achievements. So yeah, you can look into that yourself. Um, but the Kestrel is, well, it's really, it's a straightforward ship. Uh, we don't start out with any drones or any special augmentations. We only have humans and well, it's basically just let's destroy whatever we see and smash our way through in, in general. Um, there are other ways to play this game, um, but that's mainly reserved for, for some of the other ships. So let's just start an easy, easy game here and uh, Let's get out on the way and uh, we'll see uh, how to fly this ship. Okay. So the general idea of this game is, well, you get a bit of backstory here, but you have to outrun the rebel fleet who's chasing you. You have, you have some vital data that you have to get to, well, sort of, the end level. There's uh, eight sectors you have to to go through with each sector has a number of planets and uh, as I mentioned before um, the, the layout is randomly uh, generated for each game so each playthrough will be different. That also means that you have to be have to adapt to the situation. However, um, you would rarely want to, for instance, transform this into a drone boat, uh, since we have um, four weapon slots already. That's uh, a good starting point for, all right, we are going weapons. Um, obviously, you could try to fly this as a drone boat, and on easy mode, you would probably be able to succeed with it but I think the strength of this ship is uh, the weapons mode. Also we have um, plenty of airlocks so um, yeah if we get boarded we can use that to our advantage. Um, yeah I already mentioned flying this as well a weapons boat, you can fly this as a drone boat, you can also go for boarding. Uh, boarding parties if you go, uh, get a um, teleporter, however that requires some different crew members. Just humans is probably bad for that purpose, um, but again we'll get into that later. So let's just uh, get on the way I think. Or should we go over the modules? Yeah, let's do that. We have shields. Right now we just have the basic shields. We have one unit of shield. Now, um, with the, that means that we can take one hit for, for free, basically. That will deplete our shields and it, it'll take a few seconds to regenerate, but we won't suffer any damage. Now, if the shield is down or if you fly a boat without any shields, which does exist in this game, then we will start taking uh, damage if we can't evade that shot. Uh, and ev evasion is another trait. We have engines and we have piloting, which give us an evade chance. So right now we have a 10% 10, 10 chance to, to dodge any incoming fire. Um, However, if that fails, we will get hit, um, and if we get hit on one of our modules, we'll have to repair it, um, and either way, we'll suffer some, uh, some hull damage, which is this bar. If that goes all the way to zero, we are dead. 
and we've got uh, our scrap that is basically the currency in this game which is also pretty important um, we'll get into that but uh, basically you will, you'll want as much as this as possible and you'll get it by exploring and fighting we have our crew members who are stationed here um, and the first thing I'll want to do is station these so that they are actually doing something useful. Now you'll see a few of our modules here have um, little heads above them. Which basically means that um, when we put one of our crew members in the corresponding room they'll give a boost to to that. So, for instance, if we put this guy into the shields room, he will help the regeneration of our shields. So they will regenerate uh, faster. If we put this other guy into the weapons room, actually, I want him in here and <laughs> this guy in the weapons room, just because I'm used to the top one being my pilot, the second one being my shields, and then the weapons guy. But that's uh, just a personal preference. Um, if you put him in, him in here, he will help uh, the reload speed of our weapons. And if we look at which weapons we have available, we start out with uh, the Art Artemis uh, missile launcher which, as you can see, fires one missile, does two damage, and pierces all shields. So we can fire this and get a direct hit, even if the enemy has his shields up. Also, it will do two damage, which means if you look at the modules, for instance, shields here has two green bars. That means that it, uh, before it's completely well, not destroyed, but completely deactivated. It'll, it'll take two hits. However, shields is a bit um, special because it actually takes two green bars to power one uh, one shield point. Um, yeah, and if you look at our weapons, each weapon takes some amount of power, um, which again which is what the green bars indicate. So the Artemis takes one. Uh, we also have a burst laser, which takes two. And in total, we have three power available for weapons right now. Um, and now we are using it all. And I want my lasers first. You can rearrange them just by dragging them around. Um, again, a personal preference. But we see our lasers, it fires three, for each time it fires, it fires three bursts doing one damage each. However, these do not pierce shields. So if we were fighting an enemy like us who has one shield point, the first hit would only hit the shields and before we start doing actual damage to the ship. Given, of course, that the enemy ship doesn't actually dodge any of those um, those bursts. Yeah. Um, so we've covered shields and weapons, engines. Then we have the O2 oxygen generation. That's pretty important. If there's no oxygen on the ship, then our crew dies and we lose. Then we have a med bay. If we get injured, we can get injured either if we get boarded and have to fight, um, then we'll get injured. Um, if we run out of oxygen, we'll start slowly dying. And if we get hit, or a fire breaks out because of a hit, um, again, our crew members can get injured. So the med bay, it's not crucial right now, so I'll actually turn it off and put that power into, into engine so we get a bit more evasion. But uh, 
but I can always switch it back and turn it on if I need to heal anybody. And to heal them, I'll just have to select them and put them into the mid bay. Then they'll heal automatically until they're at full health, and I can just send them back again. Um, yeah, and then the piloting, which adds to evasion. We have our sensors. Uh, the sensors uh, enable us to, to actually see what's going on on our own ship at level 1. Um, if the sensors goes down, I can only see what's going on in the rooms that I have crew in, actually. Uh, however, if I upgrade this, I can also see what's going on on the enemy ship, which can be quite useful, depending again on the strategy um, that we employ. If you just want to destroy the enemy ships and basically fly straight through them, you don't actually need to, to upgrade this. But if you want to board enemy ships, um, it might be a good idea to, to upgrade this so you can see where the enemy crew is and so on. And finally we have our doors, which are all these, uh, which basically fun functions as uh, airlocks if uh, we open uh, these, we can open and close these doors manually and we can, for instance, if we open the actual airlock here, we we'll see we wind our oxygen into space and uh, the room here turns uh, turns red, which means there's no oxygen in here. So if I send a crew member in here, he'll actually start dying, as you can see, because there's no uh, oxygen in here. So yeah, let's send him to the med bay now. Um, so obviously you don't want to do that with your own crew, but if you get boarded, it could, it's uh, it can be a good strategy to 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 kill the enemies by winding the atmosphere in the rooms where they occupy. And at level one, these doors actually aren't that useful. For, for trapping enemies like that, because they'll just open for anyone. But if you upgrade them, then the, the enemy will have to break down the doors to, uh, to get through them. And that takes time, and then means that they will slowly suffocate until they actually get through the doors. And now, I talked a lot about <laughs> upgrading stuff, so let's you have this small ship button. In here you can upgrade the various parts of, of the ship. However, except for these subs, uh, these subsystems doesn't require power. However, all our primary systems require power. So if we upgrade one of these systems, we also need some power to supplement that. Unless we want to juggle around the power, like I'm, I did with the, the med bay and the engine. But you need enough power to, to, to run all the system you want active at any given point, at the level that you want them active. Um, yeah. So, let's get on with it. The first way, so to, to get the actual game going, we'll press the jump button and we'll see the beacon map. Now we are in sector 1. We have to get to sector 8. And, and to do that, we have to get, we are, we are down here, and you'll see there's an exit marked here. So we have to get to that. Um, however, we don't actually want to fly straight to that. We don't want to rush. Because, remember I mentioned the scrap. We want a lot of this to make upgrades because when we get to sector 8 we we want to be fully upgraded because we have to fight well a badass the big uh, end boss um, and we can't do that if we just rush straight through him without getting any upgrades and your upgrades well Right now they aren't that expensive, but they become more and more expensive for each level. As you can see, if I upgrade the shield, well, one costs 20, then 30, then 40, and so on. So, 
30 scrap isn't gonna cut it. So, right now, uh, the rebel fleet is not in this system. So we have, uh, uh, yeah, we can roam freely. Now, if you look at the beacons, all these little squares are beacons. That means that we can fly to each one of these and some sort of event might happen. Um, we might encounter an enemy ship, we might find a trading station, um, we might find a special event that we can trigger. Um, and for instance here we can see there's some sort of distress call. But I want to cover as much of these planets out here first because the rebel fleet is will be coming from from out here and that way and chasing us as we go uh, towards uh, the exit but before the enemy f uh, or the rebel fleet actually get to this system or this sector i'll want to to explore as many planets as i can so i'll be starting by going um, up here, I think. So let's see. Yeah, so this system wasn't very exciting. Nothing going on here. So uh, we'll just uh, keep on going. Okay, our first fight. Or well, actually. In this instance, we don't have to fight. We can accept a bribe, so we'll get some various parts. However, in, in most cases, if you choose to fight instead, you can get bigger rewards. But if, for instance, let's say we are, we are down at low half strength and we really need the repairs and stuff and we really didn't want to fight, then we might accept that bribe and just uh, pretend there's nothing was going on here but in this case I will want to fight this guy and get some loot so uh, yeah let's go ahead and do that oh, oh yeah I should mention that you can choose uh, the menu choices just with the, the number keys as well as when you'll see when we get into the battle you can choose the, the weapons with the number keys, the short, short cost 1 to 4, um, and if you have drones you can actually use uh, 5 to 7 for, for selecting the drones, even though I don't think it, it'll show a number, uh, I don't know why that's weird, but uh, it should work. But uh, let's get, get to it. So straight away I'm gonna press space, I'm gonna press space at any time to pause the game. Uh, and then space again to resume. This is very important. Unless you are like a Gozu Korean StarCraft Pro or something, the 300 APM, you will want to use space to slow down the game and assess the situation. You will want to do it often. Okay, so now we see the enemy ship here. And you can see it has a layout like ours. Now I told you about the sensors. Um, if we upgraded those, we could actually see what was in these rooms, the, the crew running around in here and so on, like we can in our own ship. Um, but since we haven't done that, we can just see that, all right, there's these rooms and these modules in each room. Okay, so what can we see about this ship? Well, first of all, he's got uh, he's got shields up, one shield point like us. Uh, he hasn't got a lot of hull, but uh, we can see how much he has here. He's a rebel rigger, and he's hostile. Um, but also, he has drones, something that we do not. Um, and we see his drone floating around here. And this is a combat drone, so he will be shooting at us. And now what we can do is disable his system by damaged, damaging them. So, for
for instance, um, if we take out this one, which is a drone control, which, well, it doesn't actually show the tooltip, so that's pretty hard to figure out <laughs> if it's the first time playing, but uh, that's his uh, drone control. So if we took that out, his drone would stop functioning. But the first thing we'll want to do is take out his shields because then we can do more damage to him. The second thing I would want to do in this situation is take out either his weapon or his drone control. In, in most battles, um, uh, especially in this configuration where we, we don't have a teleporter, we don't have drones or anything, uh, then in most cases we'll want to take out his shields and his weapons or his drones because, well, we want to take out his shield so we can do more damage to him and we'll take out his weapons or his drones so he'll do less damage to us. Um, and in some cases we'll want to take out either his engine or the pilot uh, controls because sometimes we'll get a notice that he's uh, powering up his FTL drive and trying to escape and we don't want, want him to do that because then we'd get no loot and sometimes uh, uh, he'll also go and tell the rebel fleet where we are which means that they'll get here faster but uh, in this case I'll just start by aiming my Artemis at his shields but uh, because remember this pierces shields so even though he still has his shields up we, this has a chance to go in and hit anyway um, and then hit the lasers I could aim them at directly at the weapons but actually I want to aim them at the shields as well because I want to make sure those shields are down and they stay down well they won't actually stay down because he can make repairs like if we get damaged, we can send our crew to repair them, but it takes time, so they'll be down for, for a while. Yeah. So, let's get to it. I've aimed my weapons. I press space and the game continues. Then we see our weapons charging up. Once these bars get fi uh, filled, uh, we will fire. He fired first, unfortunately, and his now I press space again, and his drones uh, hit us. So you see, we actually lose a point here. But we also just fired a missile and some lasers, so we'll see them hitting right about now. You see, his shield went down, and our laser hit. So his shield is down, he lost a lot of hull, and, um, and we see that uh, that shield is red, which means that it's totally unpowered. That, that would be equal to, to like our medbay now, uh, it's totally unpowered. So I'll switch my focus to, to his weapons. and. Actually, I want to turn on off my missiles right now. You can just just uh, press press the corresponding weapon, then you get the, the aiming icon, and you can right click in an empty space, and it won't fire again. Also, I want to actually turn on auto fire because well, it gets annoying to have to aim your weapons for for, for each and every shot. But I turned off my missiles now, because unlike lasers, missiles is a limited resource. We can find more of these throughout the galaxy, but if we just fire uh, our, our missiles at will, we will run out of missiles. So we will want to, to conserve those, and I'll probably mainly be using these missiles. Um, in, in the current 
configuration of my ship. I'll mainly be using them to take out shields and then I'll let my lasers do the talking. Um, if I find some new weapons along the way or something, um, that might change, but in the current configuration I'll, I'll try to conserve my missiles as much as possible. Yeah, but uh, from now on this fight should be quite straightforward. So let's just get on with it. And we we actually just saw we dodged one of his one of uh, his shots, which is good. And now his weapons is is down as well, so he can't fire his uh, ship weapons. He still got that drone, but. The thing is, this is a beam drone. Beams can't, uh, well, they'll get reduced by shields. And this beam drone is probably only doing one damage per per, per shot with the, with the beam. And I have one po shield point, so that'll get negated without the draining my shields. Actually, if this was doing two. Uh, damage per, per beam then it would get negated by by one point and doing one point of damage inside the ship um, but it can't actually take down the shields for that you'll need regular blasters lasers um, but since they are down he can't actually hurt me right now so I'll just yeah finish him up finish him off without any problems and there we go he's gone he's history now we see after the, the battle is over we got 28 scrap that's what we want we can also be lucky to pick up some fuel some missiles or some uh, drone parts, drone schematics, I think, I think they're called, which we need to launch drones if uh, we had that possibility. We might, you might get that later, but it, it will not be a priority on, on this ship for me. So, oh. We see a special event happened here. So now we can make a choice. The thing about these choices, unless there's, there's sometimes a blue choice. If you played through the tutorial, know this, which is usually a good solution, but that's based on you having specific crew members of a specific specific equipment mainly and in this case we don't uh, so so the thing about choices is you don't know which is the right choice sometimes one of the choices might be safer um, for instance we can salvage it salvage it and, and get for sure some scrap um, and in this case I think uh, yeah we can have him slow down the fleet. So this, this, uh, it, yeah, that's. I, I want the scrap, but that's up to you. If the the fleet is close to you, you might want uh, to pick the other choice. But sometimes there will be a choice where you don't know what the actual outcome will be. Um, because it's based on on randomness um, <laughs> it's random the outcome from game to game so uh, you'll just have to to try it out so I think we're ready to move on again another enemy this time a scout. We might see uh, this one try, trying to run away. 
but uh, we'll see. Now, first of all, this uh, enemy doesn't have any shields, so I'll won't be uh, I won't have to to use my uh, my missiles. However, I might want to actually because he had some sort of hacking algorithm which has uh, uh, yeah which he has used on my shields so I have no shields right now so I'll want to take him out really fast actually um, so I might want to use my missiles nah so yeah he got two hits in actually that's not so good but now it's my turn and his weapons is out and then I'll just shoot for his engines I always do this with scouts because they sometimes try to run away and uh, and then uh, they'll inform the, the rebel fleet of where I am so anytime I see the word scout up here I want to take out the engines because they're they seem quite likely to, to run away. Now let's just take him out and then we'll cover damage and repairing. Okay, so again we got some more scrap, some missiles and some fuel. Now uh, we got hit uh, in two places. Our, our piloting uh, equipment got hit, but it's already been repaired. Or by our trusty pilot because he was already in the room so he just did that automatically um, but he because he was in the room he also got hurt a bit so his health dropped from 100 to 85 so we're gonna send him to the med bay and just put some power in there and by the way when it's paused you can also issue orders to, to your crew and, and it'll get executed as soon as you assume the, the game and then we'll want to send someone to repair the door control so we can control our doors again because right now we can't we can't open and close our doors uh, without sending a crew member through them um, yeah so they'll get on that now you'll notice I removed uh, my pilot from from the bridge and that means we can't actually make a jump right now you need engines online and you need a pilot to make a jump so we'll have to send him back <laughs> before we can go anywhere all right and now we see the the rebel fleet is coming you'll see this this wave here we don't want to jump into any system that is within the red field that, that's bad. We we might uh, in this playthrough we might see what happens when when you do that. It's not necessarily game over, but it's it's not pref preferable. So we'll uh, have to start moving towards the right side of the map. So now we see um, another event. This is. Uh, a bit more interesting perhaps because we meet a mercenary so we can actually hire the mercenary to delay these rebels that we just saw coming after us we can hire him to scout the sector which will give us information about each of the systems right now we can't really see anything about them we, we only we'll, we only find out what's going on at each system as as we get there uh, or we can fight him or we can just say bugger off but again this game is a lot about grinding up and collecting uh, equipment materials so on for the final battle so so as long as I'm in good sh shape here I want I want to to fight him actually so we'll go ahead and do that Oh. 
now we see this mercenary actually uh, offered to to uh, surrender and and give us uh, some stuff for for letting him live. Uh, the thing about this is you'll probably get more stuff if you let him die, but it might not be more of the same stuff. So for instance, now there's missiles, drone parts and scrap. If we destroy him completely, we might only get scrap or we might get some... We'll, we'll always get scrap, but we might only get scrap or we might get some scrap and some fuel instead. So, um, if you are running low on one of these that you really need, for instance fuel, you'll always need to have at least one fuel, otherwise you can't get to the next system and you're, you'll be stuck for one turn in the system or more. Uh, so if if you're running low on, on a specific resource that you really only need, either fuel or you might be relying heavily on, on either drones or missiles in, in battle, then you might want to accept an offer like this. But in most cases I'll say let him die. So we'll do just that. Again I'll conserve my missiles. You see now he repaired his shield actually, but we should still be, be able to take him out quite easily because we fire three shots per per burst. Okay, so you see we were offered uh, three missiles and some, some drone parts I think and 11 scrap or something. Now instead we got 23 scrap which is really good. And two missiles was is still okay, but but then we got one fuel instead. So yeah, the the, the rewards differ from the offers and so on. Yes. So oh yes. Now we see why we are collecting this scrap. You see up here there's a store. So we want to go there, because then we can spend our scrap and hopefully get some sweet equipment in return. Let's see what they've got. Now, at a store we can buy fuel, missiles and drone parts. And we can, buy, uh, we can get repairs, so you'll almost always want to get repaired. Then we can buy systems. Um, so we could we could actually get a drone control and have some drones of our own if we wanted to. We can get a crew teleporter, so we can board enemy ships. If you board uh, ships and uh, kill all the crew instead of destroying them, you actually get more a uh, uh, bigger rewards. However, you you'll probably want. Um, some alien species for this, specifically rockmen or mantis, which we might encounter later on. But without uh, one of those, it, it's quite risky to board enemy ships in most cases. Just because those alien races are they're, they're better fighters. Um, or we could get some cloaking. Now, cloaking wood is really sweet. I love cloaking however we can't quite afford it unfortunately now so let's see instead what we got here so then we could get something called augmentations which is not actually systems they don't take up power or show up here or anything they're just sort of bonuses so you see we can get some stealth weapons which combined with cloaking is totally sweet that lets you fire your weapons while you're cloaked so none of that uh, Star Trek stuff where you go out of cloak to to fire on your prey. Which we would have to do otherwise. And there's some long range scanners. They, uh, they can be quite useful um, at times. But especially if you can pick this up early on, it's, it's really good. 
scrap recovery arm. It'll give you 10% more scrap each time uh, from, from any source. Uh, we, and if you can pick this up in the first sector actually, 10% more scrap from all of the eight sectors is, well, it, it can turn out to be quite a bit. So the, the 50 scraps that it costs uh, will easily make that back. So I'll want this. And then, yeah, let's just get the scanners just to, to show you what, what they do. And then I'll get the missiles and some fuel. Um, I, I explore a lot. Uh, I always fly to as many planets as I can. And that means sometimes I get low on fuel in, in the later game. So I usually pick up some extra fuel here and there, even though I don't need it right now. Um, and missiles, well, you really don't want to be without missiles in a, in a fight if you rely on missiles. And right now we are quite reliant on missiles. It's, it's an important part of taking down the shields, especially when we face some stronger enemies, which we'll do in the later sectors. So until we find some, some better weapons, we'll, we'll, need, uh, we'll need missiles. Um, now you can also sell stuff if you can sell weapons and you can sell drones and you can, well you can sell anything that will show up on the screen but you'll only get half the value back um, so but if you picked something up uh, that you don't need or don't need anymore then you can get a bit of uh, money back for it okay but I think we are done here and our will scrap, um, so let's go on. Now, those uh, the long range scanners we picked up, they add some extra info. So it, it'll show some extra info about the locations that you can jump to. In this, uh, before we didn't see these uh, yellow triangles, um, which means there's uh, a possible ship detected in that system and if there's uh, the circle behind it it means that there's some sort of um, natural phenomenon that's potential potentially harmful to us in this case this is very close to a nearby sun which is a bad environment to be in <laughs> um, we might uh, run into that later but in general, you'll want to avoid those locations if you can. But in this case, just for learning purposes, actually, I think I will, I will go here so you can see what, it, what it's uh, about. Okay, and we have an assault ship. Okay, so. What you will see here is a danger, and then you can read up on what happens. Uh, but what uh, being close to the sun actually means is that every, I don't know how often, 15, 20 seconds, something, 30 seconds, it will emit uh, solar flares. And, and these will ignite, ignite they'll, they'll start fires on our ship, <laughs> which, uh, yeah, that's not good, but we'll uh, we'll see how to to handle that. First of all, let's uh, concentrate our on our enemy here. So go for the shields and go for the weapons, and let's see what happens. So we see he, his shields are down, his weapons, weapons is down, so yeah, off with the, the missile and let the lasers finish him off. And now I just won. No, oh, he can't hit me, so I don't need more evasion. I can't evade the sun, unfortunately. 
And there we have it. The solar flare started fires in our ship. So you can have your crew put it out, but that's dangerous for them and they will uh, get injured and will have to heal up. The easiest way to, to handle this is simply evacuate the crew, then open the doors and wind the atmosphere. No oxygen. Yeah, and he's dead. He gets some nice rewards. But no oxygen, no fires. Like that. But remember to close the doors again and let the, the rooms refill with air before you send your crew in. Now, uh, a handy a few handy buttons down here. Open all doors on the ship and close all doors on the ship. So we close all doors and then we wait for the oxygen to refill. It doesn't have to go all the way up to 100%. But we will want this uh, or we'll see this slowly becoming more white. Oh, god damn it. All right. <laughs> So we'll have to do it again. And actually, I think we'll want to get out of here before <laughs> this gets too out of hand. So let's go somewhere else, preferably somewhere we, where we don't have to fight so we can just concentrate on putting out these fires and repairing our shields, which is down right now. So there's poss a possible ship detected here, so we'll go to this system instead. Nothing shows up there, so let's hope Oh, there was actually some ships here and well, it's a bit annoying to go into a battle with our shields down, but yeah, I'll risk it. So like that, come on fires, oh shit, forgot to open that door then, I'll be waiting for a long time. Close doors. Oh, <laughs> start another fire. But at least now I can only I can just open these doors and let the rest fill with oxygen. And his uh, opens are down. So close the doors again. And well, you don't have to wait to, for the rooms to completely refill it actually then, but yeah. You'll see, as they slowly start turning white and, and less red, then you can start sending in your crew. Is it too early? You'll just, just send them back to the med bay again and no problem. So let's get our shields back online. Excellent. And let's go on. Now, I just have to make sure I can get down here before they catch me. Now you can see they advance about this much each turn. So I figure if I go down there, 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 perhaps I can even manage to, to visit this one before I exit. But I'm not sure, but I should be able to visit the, this this and this and this and this perhaps that before going to the exit and, and the next sector and again you'll want to visit as many systems as possible to to get as much uh, stuff collected before the final battle so you'll want to ju stay just ahead of of the rebel fleet, but without them catching you, obviously. Again. Fight, fight, fight.
Now, actually, what we just saw in that battle is that we missed a few shots. <clears throat> Sometimes, like like us, uh, we we have an evasion chance based on our engines and our piloting, as well if 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 uh, those areas are manned. Um, the same thing applies to, to enemy ships, so if you have a hard time hitting an enemy ship, you might want to take out like the pilot or the engines to, to reduce their evasion chance. And this time we get two times rewards because we helped somebody out. Nice. Ooh, slavers. There's a high possibility that you can get an extra crew member if you choose to fight against slavers. Let's see if we, we get lucky. Because what will, ha what, uh, well, what will often happen is that they will surrender and instead of offering you scrap, or missiles or something, they'll offer a crew member, or one of their slaves actually. Which, uh, you might want to take that offer, especially in the, in the early game. I've only got three crew members, but I've actually got four rooms that I, I could man, so I can still get a bonus from manning the engine room, which will give me more evasion. So uh, I'll definitely want at least one more crew member at some point. Oh, now they're trying to escape. Unfortunately, they're trying to escape instead of surrendering. It seems like, so probably no crew member for us. Yeah, not this time. So here we have an event where we can attempt to download the ship's data stores. Which might give us some nice rewards. Or we can just take the safe choice and scrap it. Actually, what data stores would often give you is information about the current system. As, and as we are almost exi exiting the system, I think we'll just uh, take the scrap this time. shield so we'll save our missiles for some other time. Nah, now we might see something interesting here. Yeah, now he had an iron weapon. Uh, fortunately he didn't actually target the system. If he had targeted the system he would have uh, put that system, not actually damaged the system but depowered it for a, a little while so we wouldn't have to repair it but we could we wouldn't be able to use that uh, system for for a while oh nothing here now you see am i m able to make this jump before the red line reaches here. That's just on the verge, but I think I think I'll I'll risk it. Again, another slaver. Uh, so we could actually straight up buy a crew member here, but again, I think I'll attack them and hope they offer that crew member for free.
Hmm. But it doesn't seem like they they will. It's trying to escape instead. Yeah. Now again, it's based on random chance. A lot of these events, so each playthrough will be different. Each time you make a choice, it, the outcome will will not necessarily be the same. I oh, see. That's right on the line. I don't know if we are gonna encounter the rebels here or not. That's too close to call. Uh, no rebels. So we got lucky. Oh, now every now and again you'll be presented with a, a trade offer where you can trade something in for something else. Uh, in this case, um, nah, I think I'll ignore it. Oh, I don't know. Missiles, fuel. What the prices of those? Fuel is really cheap, actually, and missiles are kind of expensive. So, yeah, I'll take it, actually. Now, before we jump into the next system, I want to go over some upgrades. Now, I'll, I'll say when you hit hit the sector 3, we are in sector 1 right now, going into sector 2, but when we hit sector 3, we'll want another shield point. But for now, I think one shield point is, is still okay. Um, so what can we upgrade instead? Well, also doors, they are very, very uh, useful for, uh, for... It's very useful to upgrade doors to, to deal with invaders, but again, that mostly invaders doesn't show up until sector 3 or 4. So again, that's not necessarily something we want right now. Actually, I think I'll go for the shields early. I don't necessarily need them right now, but... Well, an extra shield point means less hull damage, means... Uh, less uh, scrap spend of, on repairs, so... Yeah. That's the economic choice right now. I'll save some scrap. I could make more upgrades. For instance, uh, it might also be a good idea to upgrade my engines um, to, to increase my uh, dodge or my evasion chance. Um, but I'll want some, some spare scrap if I suddenly run into a store that has some uh, good equipment, like for instance, we saw the previous door had uh, both uh, cloaking device and, and stealth weapons, uh, which I would really have liked to have, but I didn't have enough uh, money at that time. So if we happen to run into something like that again, it's always nice to have a bit in the bank until the very end at least. Just before you go into the final battle, obviously you'll want to, to spend it all. So, that's it for Sector 1 guys, so let's get on with it. Now here we see the Sector map. We are, we are here, and we have to get to there, where we'll meet the, the final boss. The big bad ship. And then, as you can see, there's some systems that's civilian, some that's hostile, some that's nebulous. It's only one nebula here, but uh, yeah, we'll cover that when we get to it. Um, civilian, generally more uh, tranquil. Um, you want to run to into as many hostile ships. There's more trade opportunities in civilian systems usually. Hostile, well, don't count on too many stores being around, but count on a lot of encounters, which means but that's good in a certain way because that means more s more scrap. So yeah, you'll want to go through a mix probably, as well as um, there's some special events when you get to the various alien home worlds. You have a chance. Uh, it's generally in those systems that you have a chance to unlock. Uh, 
some of them are special ships. So if you see one of these named Homeworld, you might want to go there and see if you can get lucky and, and unlock a, another ship. Um, for now, I think I'll go to the Rebel because, well, yeah, I just want to fight. <laughs> so, let's see. Unless we run into any special events, I'll probably speed up the video from here and uh, at least until we'll get to the Nebula, then uh, we can talk a bit about what that means. So, um, let's get on with it. Actually, there's some nebula. There's a nebula right here. A smaller one. The nebula system we saw later on would be most. The most of the system would be covered in a nebula. Here it is. There's just a, a small one. But uh, let's just talk about that then. Now, what uh, what happens in a nebula is that a nebula will uh, make the rebel fleet pursuing us. Uh, they won't uh, advance us as, on us as fast because they have a harder time finding us. But it will also impact our own sensors when we are in the nebula. And uh, let's just have a look at look at that. Hmm. I think you see here. But we have a blue choice, long range scanners. So lucky we bought them. Because that just uh, got some scrap they almost paid for themselves. Let's see if we can't get an encounter. Nothing here. Alright. Now we see that in the nebula the sensors doesn't work. I said before, if our sensor was offline, we could only see what's going on in in the crew, where we, in in the rooms that we have crew in. That's the same. Uh, that's basically what's happening in a nebula. So, if, for instance, there was a boarding party coming to us right now, it would be hard to tell where they were actually were on the ship. However, you can still see when doors open and close and stuff, so you can see them moving around on the ship. So, you can get a general idea, but it can be a bit annoying sometimes. Now, nebulas might also sometimes have an extra event associated with them which um, is called an iron storm. In an iron storm we'll only have half the power available. This is all the power we have down here. In an iron storm we would only have half. Right now we have 10 bars so let's see if we only had half what would that mean? That would mean that uh, Yeah, so for instance we could only have one shield point and only power our missile and some oxygen and the engines. That's it. And we don't want to turn the engines off because then we have zero evasion chance. We could turn the oxygen off, but only for a short while. Shields, well, if they're firing at us, probably wouldn't want to turn them all the way off. So it, it's... It gets a bit tricky to fight in an in an iron storm. Um, oh yeah, and another phenomenon phenomenon asteroid fields here. Well, I almost don't have to take down his shields because watch what happens. We get hit by rocks, lose shield points. Same thing happens to him. So, basically, if I destroy his shields, 
he'll pretty much die on his own. See? If you don't have any shields and you end up in an asteroid field, you're pretty much screwed. That's that's a bad situation. So yeah. You don't wanna do that. Ever. So that was bad. What just happened was one of these random events. Sometimes if you help this guy out, he'll join your crew. Sometimes he will be, well, a spy basically, and he'll kill one of your crew. So now I only have two crew members left and none piloting would mean some serious wasting chance. This, oh God damn it. Yeah, so in this situation, uh, this game can suddenly become hard, even on a... Oh, God damn it! Even on easy difficulty. So, let's have a look at how to deal with invaders. Now, f yeah. <laughs> oh, God. What I want to do here is kill off these invaders. So, so the human one, I can kill off by simply doing this. Open all the doors, vent the atmosphere, and sayonara. Or he has to come to the med bay, and if you fight in the med bay, you get healed while fighting. If I turn that on. However, there is a problem here, because the other intruder is um, a drone, an android, if you will, a robot. So he doesn't care about the atmosphere. However, one way to deal with that is simply killing this ship controlling that robot because it can't function on it on its own so let's see here when we get uh, get our oxygen back we can go and take care of it without any problems yeah so there it is but it's not fighting back anymore. Oh, another problem. There was a hole in our ship. We'll take care of that in a moment. We've got the sensors back. You can see there's no air in this room because that that's that space right there. <laughs> there's a hole into space. So we send our crewman was in. They slowly suffocate. They have to patch up the hole on to the med bay. Which I've taken offline, so Yeah, Th one thing I forgot to mention early on was actually the crew skills. Uh, when you mouse over the crew, you'll see these green bars. Um, when a crew work in a certain area, like his his uh, 
is either piloting or running the engines, the shields, or weapons, or doing repairing or even combat, they earn experience and level up if once once this bar gets full. And once you get to the the, f the final battle, it's really nice to have you know a max level pilot, max level shield guy, max level weapons guy, max level engines guy. It hel helps out quite a bit to have have those levels. So that we just lost our pilot a bit ago, that's a bit annoying because that means now we are we are guy down and we can pick we can probably pick someone up later but they won't get as much experience they might not reach the max level before the final fight so that that was quite annoying really Bought it again? What the fuck? Screw you guys. But here we see how effective it is to, to fight in the med bay. Two guys easily took th down uh, three guys. So it's really useful to do that. And if we upgraded the doors, which we probably should because we keep getting boarded, then we can actually shut them out of the med bay as well, so they'll have to stay out there and in, a, in a in a little while while they break down the doors, which means they'll be at even lower health once they actually get into the med bay, and they'll be even easier to take down. Oh, a star. Let's hope they have some nice stuff. Uh, well, they got the cloak. I want that. But I really don't want crew drones or a teleporter. And, well, not in this ship, at least. Some fuel. Couple of extra missiles. Now let's see if we can put this cloak to good use. Now what happens is, if when you press the cloak button down here, we turn invisible. And when we're invisible, the enemy can actually fire us, unless he's got stealth weapons, which I don't, th I'm not sure, um, the end boss has it, I think, but, uh, oh well. No, that's wrong. We can't fire while we're cloaked, unless we had stealth weapons. But the enemy can't even uh, target us while... So so he his weapons won't be charging while we're cloaked. Which can give us a nice edge in the battle. Because now I took out his weapons before he even fired one shot.
So, yeah, I think this is it for the introduction to FTL. And the Kestrel, because I'm not gonna get very far right now, I think. At least I'm in a bad position. I lost another crew member, so I'm gonna call it quits. But I think uh, what I told you, you'll pick some, some stuff up yourself. For instance, uh, how alien crew members functions, uh, which will open up other avenues of uh, of play. But I'll cover that in more depth uh, when I go out over one of the other ships, and hopefully we'll also get to discuss the the final battle against the the big bad wolf in Sector Eight. So thanks for watching, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it and were, and you found uh, it helpful. Bye bye.